Hello, everyone. It's great to be able to welcome you here to uh, our service of worship. And uh, whether you're joining us live on Sunday or any time in the week, we're really grateful to God for such a beautiful world in which we find ourselves. And this week, we're carrying on with our theme of keeping safe, keeping connected, and keeping praying. And we are hearing from Archdeacon Adrian later as we carry on our series through the Psalms. And it's lovely that we've got a message from him. It's going to be from Psalm 27. Initially, he recorded it for St. Luke's in Bath. So don't be put off when there are references to St. Luke's because it's great that we can share in his ministry as well. So I'd like to start on this glorious day by reading one or two verses from Psalm 27. The Lord is my light and my salvation. Whom shall I fear? The Lord is the stronghold of my life. Of whom shall I be afraid? And then a little gap to verse 4. One thing I ask from the Lord, this only do I seek, that I may dwell in the house of the Lord all the days of my life, to gaze on the beauty of the Lord and to seek him in his temple. For in the day of trouble he will keep me safe in his dwelling. He will hide me in the shelter of his sacred tent and set me high upon the rock. So we'll be hearing a little bit more from Adrian as he explains those words of trust and praise. But also, uh, we're looking forward this week uh, on Thursday to Ascension Day. Uh, the uh, Ascension Day for the last few years has been combined with being the first day of 10 days of prayer for thy kingdom come. And we're going to do the same this year, but obviously we'll all be virtually doing it. Um, I'd love us to do a 24-7 time of prayer coverage but also on ascension day there'll be a new hymn that i'll pop up onto the facebook page and we'll have in the gmail uh, about thy kingdom come and i'd love you to start thinking about the five people that you're going to pray for in the 10 days between ascension and pentecost to come to know christ it's really an exciting thing to think about at the moment and as we do that as we come together to worship as we take the first tentative steps out of lockdown into a slightly different future the last few words of psalm 27 i remain confident of this i will see the goodness of the lord in the land of the living wait for the lord be strong and take heart and wait for the lord Oh, 
John chapter 21, verses 1 to 14. Jesus and the miraculous catch of fish. Afterwards, Jesus appeared again to his disciples by the Sea of Galilee. It happened this way. Simon Peter, Thomas, also known as Didymus, Nathaniel from Cana in Galilee, the sons of Zebedee, and two other disciples were together. I'm going out to fish, Simon Peter told them. And they said, we'll go with you. So they went out and got into the boat, but that night they caught nothing. Early in the morning Jesus stood on the shore, but the disciples did not realise that it was Jesus. He called out to them, friends, haven't you any fish? No, they answered. He said, throw your net on the right side of the boat and you will find some. When they did, they were unable to haul the net in because of the large number of fish. Then the disciple whom Jesus loved said to Peter, It is the Lord. As soon as Simon Peter heard him say, It is the Lord, he wrapped his outer garment around him, for he had taken it off, and jumped into the water. The other disciples followed in the boat, towing the net full of fish, for they were not far from the shore, about a hundred metres. When they landed, they saw a fire of burning coals there, with fish on it, and some bread. Jesus said to them, Bring some of the fish you have just caught. So Simon Peter climbed back into the boat and dragged the net ashore. It was full of large fish, but even with so many, the net was not torn. Jesus said to them, come and have breakfast. None of the disciples dared ask him, who are you? They knew it was the Lord. Jesus came, took the bread and gave it to them and did the same with the fish. This was now the third time Jesus appeared to his disciples after he was raised from the dead. Thanks be to God. Psalm 27, a Psalm of David. The Lord is my light and my salvation. Whom shall I fear? The Lord is the stronghold of my life. Of whom shall I be afraid? When the wicked advance against me to devour me, it is my enemies and my foes who will stumble and fall. Though an army besiege me, my heart will not fear. Though war break out against me, even then I will be confident. One thing I ask from the Lord, this only do I seek, that I may dwell in the house of the Lord all the days of my life, to gaze on the beauty of the Lord and to seek him in his temple. For in the day of trouble he will keep me safe in my dwelling, he will hide me in the shelter of his sacred tent and set me high upon a rock. Then my head will be exalted above the enemies who surround me. At his sacred tent I will sacrifice with shouts of joy. I will sing and make music to the Lord. Hear my voice when I call, Lord. Be merciful to me and answer me. My heart says of you, seek his face. Your face, Lord, I will seek. Do not hide your face from me. Do not turn your servant away in anger. You have been my helper. Do not reject me or forsake me, God my Saviour. Though my father and mother forsake me, the Lord will receive me. Teach me your way, Lord. Lead me in a straight path because of my oppressors. Do not hand me over to the desire of my foes, for false witnesses rise up against me spouting malicious accusations. I remain confident of this. I will see the goodness of the Lord in the land of the living. Wait for the Lord, be strong and take heart and wait for the Lord. Thanks be to God. Morning everyone. It's uh, really good to be with you in this slightly strange way. We're gonna to look together at a bit of Psalm 27 together, but let's pray. Loving Father, please would you open our eyes that we might behold wonderful things in your word. And by your Holy Spirit, melt our hearts and mould our wills, 
that we might live in humble obedience to all that we read. In Jesus' precious name we pray. Amen. Some time ago I read a story in the paper purported to be true, I can't guarantee it, uh, of a budgie named Chippy who had a very bad day. It began when the bird's owner decided to clean its cage with a vacuum cleaner. Well, you know what's coming next. She was almost finished when the phone rang. She turned around to answer and before she knew it, Chippy was gone. Well, in a panic, the owner ripped to open the vacuum bag. And there was Chippy, covered in dirt, grasping for air. She took him to the bathroom, rinsed him under the tap. And then realising that Chippy was cold and wet, she reached for the hairdryer. Chippy never knew what had hit him. Well, his owner was asked just a few days later how he was recovering. Well, she replied, Chippy doesn't sing anymore. He just sits and stares. We can laugh, except that there are times, maybe even now, when we have felt exactly like that. One minute we're whistling through life, and the next you're caught in a whirlwind of stress and pain, of grief and fear. And life just sucks you up into its vortex. And just when you think you've recovered from one bit of trouble, another gust blows in your direction. I mean, you know the feeling. That feeling where you don't feel like singing anymore. You feel dazed. All you can do is sit and stare. I've seen that on the looks of people who have been bereaved, who have suddenly got terrible news. See, many people today, yeah, maybe less in the southwest, yeah, but certainly across this nation, across this world, and I bet there are people you know who have experienced that feeling in this last month. But the truth is, when this virus passes, there will still be other things. There will still be redundancy, cancer diagnoses. There will still be relationship breakdown. There will still be untimely deaths. And David, our psalmist, has experienced many such terrible times. He's battled pain and stress and distress over and over again in his life. And Psalm 27 is in some ways his advice to us when we're facing the battle. I've only got time to pick up two things, two bits of advice from David. So I might encourage you to spend perhaps some other time today or this week drinking in the whole of Psalm 27. But the first thing I notice is that David says, focus on God, not on your fear. It's there in verse one. The Lord is my light and my salvation. Whom shall I fear? The Lord is the stronghold of my life. Of whom shall I be afraid? Notice how David begins by extolling and proclaiming what he knows to be true of God. You see, if that was me, if stuff like that was happening in my life, rubbish, if I was under attack from an enemy, I'd start at verse 2. I'd start saying, the wicked advance against me to devour me. I'd be saying, my endless enemies and my foes, my, this army is besieging me. War's broken out against me. That's the kind of thing I'd be saying. But that's not what David is saying. He says, no, when the wicked advance against me to devour me, it's not me who stumbles, it, it's they. When that army comes towards me, when my, my heart is in danger of, of becoming fearful, actually, I become confident. How does he do that? But what it does is, uh, unlike me, is he doesn't get too quickly overwhelmed by what's going on in life. He's kind of taught himself to focus first on what he knows to be true of God. And God is three things to David. It's there in verse one. He's my light, salvation and stronghold. Firstly, light. God is light. Now, light means security. You see, as a shepherd, David knew that the light of a fire was important to protect his sheep through the night. As a soldier, David knew that enemies are dangerous under cover of darkness. If you're walking in a dark path, you carry a light so you don't trip or fall. If you're in a dark part of town, you carry a torch in case someone's lurking, waiting for you. You may be surprised to know that this is the only passage in the whole Old Testament where God is his himself described 
as light. Yeah, God makes light. But this is the only time in the Old Testament where God is light. But Jesus picks up that one instance and himself proclaims, I am the light of the world. Jesus is saying, I am your security. I am the radiance of God's majestic glory. I will protect you from the dangers of darkness. God is light. But secondly, God is salvation. Salvation means rescue. Now, I've been under a bit of pressure this week from my wife, Fran, to watch uh, a bit of a series called Our Girl. We've gone right back to the beginning. It's all about a medic in the British Army. In the, the episode we watched this week, she was uh, captured by the Taliban in a cell. She was desperate. Her captors are threatening to kill her in the next few hours. And then she suddenly looks up and she hears the sound of a drone. She just hears that noise. And that noise said to her, she's not been forgotten behind enemy lines. People were out looking for her. And then she hears the helicopter as special forces appear. And then the rope comes down and hits the ground as a commando comes down grabs her from her cell, takes her up into a helicopter and away to freedom and safety. See, for us, the presence of a rescuer who's not forgotten us is no less real. See, that's why David exclaims in verse one here, whom shall I fear? Who indeed? As Paul wrote in Romans, if God is for us, who can possibly be against us? I just remember what the name Jesus means. The Lord saves. God is light. God is salvation. And then God is stronghold. That word means refuge or protector. I guess one of the great topics in the COVID story at the moment is the availability or maybe unavailability of protective equipment, PPE. Now, if we're going to send medics into dangerous wards, we need them to have proper protection. And the fear is that the danger of going in without full protection could easily turn into a disaster. But David is certain that nothing will get through his refuge. Nothing will get through the protection that God offers him. Yes, humanly, it's rough. I mean, let's not try and uh, dress it up as if uh, uh, David's having a bit of a holiday here. He's not. He's got an enemy breathing down his neck. It's rough. It is not pleasant. But David knows that nothing ultimately can ever destroy him. Nothing can wrench him from the source of life itself. Again, as Paul writes, I am convinced that neither death nor life, neither angels nor demons, neither the present, the future, nor any powers, nor height, nor depth, nor anything else in all creation, We'll be able to separate us from the love of God in Christ Jesus, our Lord. Light, salvation, stronghold. Yeah, it reminds me of that verse from Ecclesiastes. Maybe you know this, you may have heard it at a wedding. Though one may be overpowered, two can defend themselves. A cord of three strands is not quickly broken. It's like David's holding on to those three strands of God's character and finds that they simply don't break. He can let his whole weight be taken on them. That's why in verses two and three, in the face of the enemy, nothing breaks his confidence. Those three stranded cord hold fast. I just notice one of the most important words in English is that little word, my, it's a small word. It's two letters in English and it's one letter in Hebrew. But it makes all the difference. It's not that just God is a light, a salvation, a stronghold. No, for David, he is my light, my salvation, my stronghold. He makes a difference to me in reality, in the things I'm facing right now. This is not just theology that, that I might try and recall. This is reality. This is what God is and does for me as a battered disciple. That's the first piece of advice that David makes in his psalm. But it leads to the second piece of advice. If the first is to focus on God, not fear. The second is this, to practice a consistent walk 
with God. It's there in verse four. One thing I ask from the Lord, this only do I seek, that I may dwell in the house of the Lord all the days of my life, to gaze on the beauty of the Lord and to seek him in his temple. You see, when David says all the days of my life, he's talking about a constant communion with God. He's not talking about coming to God only when he's in trouble. I mean, so many of us do that, don't we? When crisis hits, then we pray. It's interesting how many people are tuning into these recordings who don't normally come to church. Maybe again, there's that sense of, gosh, when the world turned upside down, where is God? Since we turn to him now in crisis. But why did David have assurance in troubled times? Well, it's because before all the troubles ever got to him, he's already been dwelling in God's house all the days of his life. I mean, it's obvious, isn't it? Soldiers train for battle during peacetime. They do that so they're ready for the moment when they're needed. But yet the danger for us is in life is that we wait to train for the battle in the midst of the battle. No, no, no. The time to train is before the battle ever begins. You know, If we're going to have a constant assurance of God's presence, of his love, of that light, salvation stronghold in the bad times, then we need to be dwelling on those things. In the good times. Now, it's not by accident that David mentions various titles for God's house, the house of the Lord, temple, tabernacle in these verses. You see, David made it his consistent practice to be part of a worshipping community. Why? Well, he knew he needed regularly to be worshipping, being shaped by God's word, being encouraged and spurred on by the people of God. Now, we don't need physical buildings for that, as we're discovering right now. The key is that day by day, we're doing all that we can to keep God front and centre. I remember watching a video about the Golden Gate Bridge in San Francisco. You may know that vast suspension bridge. It's all about why it was so secure, even in the face of a terrorist attack. And one of the officials said this. Every bit of concrete, all the pavements and every bit of steel in the entire bridge, all of it relates one piece to another. Every piece of metal in that bridge finally relates to two giant cables. And that finally comes up to two piers that go down into the rock and to anchors on either side. That's the genius of the bridge, he said, that every single piece of metal and concrete is preoccupied with its foundation. You see, David's whole life is like that suspension bridge. It's safe and confident and sturdy, even under the greatest stress, because every piece of his life, every day, is preoccupied with its foundation, with the Lord God himself. <clears throat> you see, today, we can't gather in the way we're used to doing, and we may struggle as we're not able to seek him in his temple, if we just use that physical analogy. But what we can do in verse four is to gaze on the beauty of the Lord. And actually, that just brings us back to verse one. You know, however each day of this week feels, whatever blast may come our way, or actually, even if you're calm, remember, calm often becomes before a storm. I wonder if I might urge you to spend this week deliberately gazing on the beauty of God. And maybe this week to take those three strands of that unbreakable cord of God's character. That God is your light. That God is your salvation. That God is your stronghold. Amen.
Good morning, everyone. Heavenly Father, we pray for your amazing world, which is broken and suffering. We know that you are a mighty, faithful, merciful and ever-loving God who seeks to bless your children. We know that when we pray in faith, you have promised to hear our prayers. So now, Lord, we ask that you hear our prayers and have mercy upon us. We know, like Jesus, our journey will sometimes be one of suffering, but that you will never forsake us. So now, Lord, with the global pandemic particularly on our minds, we pray for the areas of the world most afflicted by the coronavirus. And at this time, we particularly lift our country to you, the United States of America and areas of Europe, namely Italy, Spain, France and Belgium. We pray for leaders in the governments of these countries, that you will give them wisdom and guidance as they seek to chart their paths out of lockdown. We pray that deaths due to the virus will continue to fall and there will be no second spike of infections. We pray for those returning to work and school in this coming month, that you will guide and protect employers, employees, teachers, parents and children at this uncertain time. We particularly lift to you those who are worried and anxious about returning to work and school and those who need to travel on public transport. We thank you Lord for our NHS, for doctors, nurses, care home staff and those in a caring capacity everywhere that they will feel valued and protected in their work. We also pray for those suffering from the virus in our country. We pray for healing, Lord, but also peace and relief from pain and suffering. And of course, Lord, we ask for you to comfort the families of all who have died from the virus or other illnesses. And particularly in our local community, we pray for Shokowik, for all the residents that they would be protected from the virus and have some peace and understanding about why they are unable to see their families at this time. We pray for the situation in care homes nationwide and we pray that it would improve, that any residents needing care would receive all that they need, if necessary, in hospital. And now, Lord, we pray for those known to us and those in our church family and community. We particularly lift Anne Brown to you, her daughter Julie and the whole family as they mourn the death of Derek. So many of us knew Derek. We thank you, Lord, for the kind and gentle man he was and a friend to all of us. We thank you for his strong faith in you and the way he showed it to so many. We pray that you will comfort and bless Anne and her family at this sad time and give them many happy memories of their lives together. We also pray for Trevor Francis as he recovers from recent surgery. We pray that you will return him to good health and particularly help his appetite to improve. And we pray that he will be close to you at this time and draw strength and comfort from you. And finally, Lord, we pray for any others who are known to all of us who are suffering with poor health, fear, loneliness or anxiety, that you will give them your peace, strength and comfort at this difficult time. Thank you for our church here in Bath Ford, for Sally, Steve and their family. And we pray for you to continue to bless the work of the church. We pray that many good things will come out of this time of world crisis, that this world will become one which is more aligned to your kingdom and that many more people come to know Jesus as their Lord and Saviour. In Jesus' name we ask all these things. Amen. Risen Christ, 
by the lakeside, you renewed your call to your disciples. Help your church to obey your command and draw the nations to the fire of your love. To the glory of God, the Father. to everybody who has joined us in worship thanks to all those who've been involved in putting it together and thank you to all of you for all the love and service and prayer that's going on throughout the week so as we go some words of blessing may the blessing of god the father god the son and god the holy spirit be among you and remain with you now and forever amen <laughs>